Hey guys, I thought I'd do a little video on driving to work tonight. <clears throat> this video is going to be basically the differences between my tradesman and my big horn. And you know, I do miss my tradesman in some ways. I've had that truck all set up 100% uh, the way I liked it. But you know, the tradesman, you don't understand it, I guess, until you get into a a higher trim package you know this truck offers a lot of luxury features that i'm still getting used to um you know the big one is we're going into winter time out here and sorry for the shakiness it's kind of a bumpy road here but uh going into winter time i mean as you can see temperature is 32 degrees out right now and i found that if you remote start this truck another key feature remote start um and it's close to freezing, it automatically turns on your heated seats and heated steering wheel. And as anybody knows that has one of these trucks, you know, they take a little while to warm up. So I never let this truck idle for more than 10 minutes um, just because of the emissions crap on it. But it is kind of nice to jump in a truck and have the seats all warmed up, the leather steering wheel all warmed up. Kind of just spoils you, I'm not going to lie on that one. You know, the tradesman did his job. They did his job well. It was uh, a good truck, had everything anybody needed to get the job done. But, you know, the big horn really does step it up a little bit. You know, not a Laramie Longhorn Limited by any means. But the only thing this truck's missing to separate it from a Laramie is the leather seats and the sunroof, I believe. It's got every other option on it, navigation, the whole nine. So, anyways, as a, like I said, as a quick comparison, um, I will say this truck doesn't feel quite as powerful, but that's also because my previous truck was deleted and tuned, obviously. So, this truck will get there eventually. Um, I will say this truck was really, really, really tight feeling uh, as far as the motor goes when I first got it. I mean, as you can see, I've got... 1500 miles on it and it is already uh, quite a bit different this thing lacked power pretty bad when it was brand new um, almost to the point where I was thinking about taking it in to see if everything was okay the turbo was a lot louder and you put your foot into it and it just didn't seem like it wanted to go as good and I did read the manual and it talked about you know, if you don't tow often, it could take up to six, seven, eight thousand before you start getting better efficiency out of the motor. Uh, out of these fifteen hundred miles, I bet I've had my trailer on three to four hundred, and it's made a difference. So it's starting to feel pretty normal now. Um, I do like where it's going. Fuel mileage eighteen, nineteen right now. It's a little colder, so it doesn't get quite as good. Uh, in the winter but uh, even this over here you know the the navigation the dual climate all that stuff is really great for traveling my wife really appreciates it you know the tradesman didn't have that uh, I'm a huge fan of the bucket seats guys you can't see them I'm sorry it's dark the bucket seats are really nice um, I they fit you better they, they just feel a little more luxurious so that's that's really kind of a nice thing to have uh, but other than that I mean this truck is like for like it's a white crew cab long bed truck four wheel drive single, single rear wheel exact same as my 15 tradesman was so it's a pretty good comparison um, as far as the gauges go on the big horn I mean yeah you get so much more information configured the way you want it uh, again not better than the tradesman as far as quality just more user friendly more options I guess you could say uh, I'm not bagging anybody that's got a tradesman I bought a tra I've actually had a couple tradesmen I had no beefs with any of those trucks the only reason I bought them is I didn't want to spend the money for something upgraded and it's as simple as that but 
This one does have the four wheel drive dial, which I'm not crazy about the location. Just, I mean, I'm sitting here. If you look down, you can see my dial. I guess you're picking it up because the camera's low, but the shifter's in the way. See how it kind of goes away right there? So from where I sit, the shifter's kind of in the way of the turn dial, which isn't a huge deal by any means, but it's just something that I noticed. I nitpick these trucks. And I will say something this last elk season, I was in my father-in-law's 16 Duramax and he swears by the Duramaxes. I'm not gonna bag on Duramaxes. I think they are good trucks. I don't care for Fords, but I will have no problems driving a Dodge or a Chevy. I personally like the interior cabin looks, dash layout, all that stuff better in the Ram than the Duramax. And I'm a bigger fan of the Cummins over the Duramax. But again, not bashing the Duramax. Great truck. I drove it, almost bought one, and in the end I just came back to the Ram. But what I was getting at is I had to use four wheel drive in my father-in-law's Duramax when I were out elk hunting. And he has a dial up on the left hand side. I put it in four wheel and there was no indicator on the dash that you were in four wheel drive. It was in the daytime. So the little light on the dial itself obviously was in a different position because the knob was in a different position. But if I'd have jumped out and someone else would have jumped in, there's no way they would have known if that truck was in four wheel drive. I was kind of shocked about that. You know, an indicator on the dash, that's kind of, uh, that's an important one in my opinion. You don't want to run these trucks four wheel on dry pavement, you know? So knowing if you're in four wheel or not, that's kind of a big deal and he's got a, an LTZ package I mean it's not a small trim package and that's kind of the other thing that I noticed is his LTZ only thing it has over my truck is leather that is absolutely it um, I've actually got a couple little things he does not have so obviously with the leather you get the cooled seats as well which I only have the heated but it, it just wasn't enough of a cost difference in or excuse me, a quality difference for the cost. So, anyways, this is just, a, like I said, Tradesman versus Bighorn, and I'm not bagging on Chevys. I'm just letting you know how my mind works, and I'm a truck guy through and through. I'm always watching videos on trucks. I'm always analyzing trucks, New Year's, what they have, what they can do, you know, all that fun stuff. So, Anyway, guys, as I was driving to work tonight, just thought I'd do a quick comparison and give you my thoughts. Um, again, if you have any questions, you know, let me know. I'll be as honest as I can with you or just straight up give you my opinion, which, you know, quite frankly doesn't mean two things or another. But it's just the way that I look at trucks, what I'm looking for, and how I use them. So, anyways, guys, hope this video isn't too dark. Um, hopefully you guys can see it. If not, I'll make sure not to post any more of these these night videos uh, just so you guys can actually see what I'm seeing. But if you have any questions, let me know, guys. Have a good night. See you on the next one.